light pollution, the bane of our hobby. Now, unfortunately, there's no absolute cure for it unless you m travel and, and go to darker locations. Now, of course, that's not convenient for all of us, uh, but there is still some little things we can do to dramatically improve our views when viewing from towns and cities and just uh, deal with the light pollution as best we can. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Light pollution, oh yes, it's the bane of us all. Oh dear, I tell you, I've got it terrible where I am. But there's a few things I do which I'm gonna share with you and hopefully it's gonna help you too. Uh, now, the first thing I can say about dealing with light pollution is, it may sound obvious, but you need to get as much dark adapted eyes as you possibly can. Now, this starts right at the beginning, really, okay? Now, wherever you're going to observe, you want to get out there, you know, and expect a good 40 minutes for your, light, for your eyes to get dark adapted. Now, you don't want to be looking at your phone, okay? That's an absolute no-no while you just sat waiting for it because, um, in fact, switch your phone off if you can, put it in your pocket. Don't do something like um, look at streetlights, all right? I mean, a lot of these sound a little bit obvious, but trust me, they're not. Why are you just sat, you know, and you're, you're waiting for your eyes to get darker? It's so easy to just glance around and say, oh, that, that you know, that nuisance streetlight over there. And you've looked at it, okay? And then that instantly you, you, you're like fighting a losing battle. So this is the first step is to just get your eyes dark adapted okay that means turn all your lights off okay if it means you have to go and sit in the kitchen for a bit turn the kitchen light off all right always set your telescope up um, where you you can't I mean if you if we're dealing with light pollution so you're sure there'll be enough light to just set it up whether it's dark or not uh but set it up in the daytime if you can you know make sure you're well organized that you're not going in and out of the house, okay, once you've got this dark adaptation going. Um, now, also look and uh, plan carefully where you're going to place your telescope. You want to be looking for shaded areas, okay? You want a quite a big shade casting down, okay? Do you know what I mean? Not like a little thing where you're cramped up in the corner somewhere. Uh, you know, a nice big shaded area. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, there's only one shaded area and that's over there, but that's blocking the uh, target that I want to observe. I can't see this, that part of the sky there. Well, astronomy is all about patience, okay? And any good astronomer will wait for the target to come to them, okay? This is what I do, okay? I mean, Saturn and Jupiter have been up in the sky is ready to observe for a while now. And I still haven't really got a chance unless I stay up till, you know, early hours of the morning because they're still in the, in, in the part of the sky that's hard for me to see. By the end of the month, they'll have moved round to see and I can just quite easily and comfortably uh, absorb, them, uh, absorb them. Well, I will be absorbing them. <laughs> I'll be absorbing their beauty. But uh, observe them. And, uh, and, you know, and uh, also see them uh, in, in a nice, comfortable uh, place in the sky, okay, in my little shaded area. Now, if you can't find any shade or there is no shade, um, make the shade localized, okay? Now, this can be easily done by just simply cupping your hands around the side of your face like this, okay? And as you go up to the eyepiece, block as much light as you can out coming in from the sides. Uh, another way you can do this in colder weather, if you're wearing a hood or a jacket with a hood, uh, just to pull the hood right over the eyepiece, uh, where you're looking to block as much as that light coming in from the sides as you can. This is going to dramatically improve the contrast, okay, in your views. Um, even a towel, you can even take a towel out there with you and uh, throw a towel over your head. Or, of course, my old favourite, um, an old plant pot. Um, it's a bit of a far out idea uh, and you may get a few uh, double takes, but if you actually cut the bottom of a, a plant pot, and uh, use the wide end and you put that over your face and the other end over the focuser or the eyepiece again it, it, it just dramatically improves contrast
Now, for the telescope, there are a few things you can actually do to improve the views with your telescope, because when I keep talking about contrast, this is something you're going to dramatically lose uh, when viewing from towns and cities or near towns and cities. Um, now, I've, I've covered this in, a, in another video before. Uh, some of you may remember it as the magic wand, um, and it was just how it turned out and I'd finished making it. And all this simply is, is a tube, okay? Imagine a dew shield that's on a normal telescope. Make a dew shield uh, for about 18 inches long, if you like, that just fits nice and snug over the end of your telescope. Now, this is more for reflector users. Now, what this does, um, because our uh, reflector telescope is designed, because the uh, eyepiece is here, as you can see, there's not much spa space here at the end of the telescope. Now, this is going to introduce a lot of that light pollution. And it's going to scatter about inside the tube of the telescope, again, reducing contrast. And what this extension tube will do is it just helps. In, in actual fact, it kind of pushes the uh, focuser back, if you like, because now the end of the tube's up here. Um, again, this is it's, it's something I do. I still do. Um, I found targets um, before when I don't have it on. I can't see them. When I do put them on, when I do put this extension tube up, I can see them. So uh, I'm proof of the pudding that it does actually work this and it will improve things. Now, another little tip uh, to put into practice that you can try if you are struggling to find things in light polluted skies. Now, say you're putting all these things into practice, okay, you're shielding your eyes, you've got a nice dark spot, you've got your big dew seal on, okay. Um, when you're uh, scouting around you, um, and looking for things, usually you'll be using a low-powered eyepiece, okay? And that's how you always want to start. When you're searching for anything, whether it's planets, deep sky objects, always use your lowest-powered eyepiece. And uh, sometimes, if you're still fishing about and you can't find it, um, you may be uh, inclined to think that you need to get a wider field or even a lower powered eyepiece uh, to get a wider field of view. And you wouldn't be wrong in thinking that, usually that's the case. But try increasing the power a little bit or increase, increasing the magnification a little bit and go with something, say if you're using a 20, go with something like a 10 or something like that. Now what this is going to do, it's going to narrow the field of view and it's going to darken the background a little bit. So that little deep sky object that you've been looking for might just pop a little bit more. And that way, once you've got it in the field of view, you can then swap around and play with eyepieces once you've found it, okay? Um, oh, it's always a good idea to use the averted uh, vision technique as well. When you think, you know, I'm sure it's around here somewhere, don't look directly into the center of the eyepiece or the field of view. Look to one side, use your averted vision. The averted vision is like if you keep looking at me and you bring your hand in closer like that, you know, you can't see your hand and then suddenly it comes into view, that's averted vision. Use that kind of vision. It's a bit of a technique, it's a bit of a knack to get used to it at first. Uh, but trust me, in light polluted skies, um, it, it, it can be uh, really valuable, that one. Now, you may or may not be aware of light pollution filters. Uh, these are something that you can get. Now, they vary in price from uh, around about £20 up to, you know, hundreds of pounds, uh, really. Um, now, they come as light pollution filters. Sometimes uh, they're like low emission filters, they can be called. Uh, sky glow filters. And they're like anything, really. You get what you pay for, okay? Um, you know, uh, this is this is a middle of the road one. I think this one was about 50, 60 pounds. I can't remember. It was a long time ago when I bought it. Um, I use it sometimes. Um, and so that kind of, you know, gives you an idea of do they work? They're not brilliant. I mean, they're not going to just totally uh, cut out all the sodium glow and look, you know, make it as, as though you're a peer, you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, they're, they're probably the more essential really for astrophotography. 
Um, but yes, the, you know what I mean, uh, they do have the place for visual astronomy. So there's something else you could think about going. Like I say, I would start on the cheaper side with them. No, I don't mean the really, really cheap ones, the AliExpress and the rest of it cheap. I mean, something around about 40, 50 pounds, something like that, um, uh, you know, and have a look and see what you think and then maybe invest in something a little bit better. The main key to dealing or combating with light pollution is start from your localised, the, the immediate light pollution, your mobile phone, your house lights, turn them off, okay, turn as many lights as you can off. I know <coughs> we haven't got a magic switch, I wish we had, uh, where we could remotely switch the street lights off. Um, but what I do to combat that, and know again this isn't uh, ideal for everybody, but see if you can hang blankets up hang some kind of sheets up, blankets up, anything. Um, do a makeshift line, string a makeshift line and, and, and hang some blankets up. Make yourself a little enclosed area. Um, just doing that, I mean, it's not gonna do so much for the sky glow itself, but darkness is your friend. It really is, okay? The, the, as, as much as you can keep that artificial light, you know, like I say, don't be go glancing at street lights thinking, oh, that annoying light, I wish it, that's instantly killed your, your dark adapted eyes. And remember, it can take 40 minutes for your eyes to get properly dark adapted. But like I said at the start of the video, folks, there's only one true way of, of beating light pollution, and that is to get away from it. And I can tell you, if you've never done this, or never looked through a telescope in the proper dark skies, it is such an experience. I, I, I can't... Like this five inch telescope, if you take it to the right locations, it's gonna feel like an eight inch telescope. It Honestly, the things that you can see that you can't see normally through your telescope, it's incredible. But um, like I say, just follow these little tips and it will improve your, your views, okay? Just standing out in the middle of this <laughs> sodium glow, that's not gonna do you any favors, all right? So just follow these steps, keep in the shade, keep out of the light as much as you possibly can. Get that dew shield on there, build yourself a little dew shield. Trust me, you'll not be wasting your time. It really works. Just try all these tips, folks, and uh, maybe we ought to write letters to us MPs and say, look, how about getting these lights dimmed at certain hours of the night, you know what I mean? If enough, if enough, if enough of us gather together, I'm sure they might start listening. Uh, yes, well, pigs might fly as well, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you can at least take something away from this video. Uh, don't forget to hit that like if you've uh, if you like the video, because that helps the channel uh, massively. Um, in the meantime, guys, stay out of them bright lights, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.